first thing uh, we'll touch on is how to uh, calculate the um, basically the f funnels uh, using sequential segments in Google Analytics, as opposed to the uh, you know Adobe Analytics, uh, which is called the path analysis. So uh, first step is in Google Analytics and calculating the uh, sequence segments. And we're going to use just this car dealership site uh, as one of my clients. And so um, in their Google Analytics accounts, <coughs> in the source medium report, you can use any report as segments copy across. Um, and uh, so we're going to just say we start at the home page, we go to the new vehicles as the second page, and then we click on this first vehicle here is Dodge Journey as the third step. So three steps in this funnel as an example. So we want to track all three steps. And obviously the URL changes here, so that's easy. No, you don't have to create any events or anything. So um should be pretty easy so you just go up here and add a segment and you can do this in any report you're in i just always happen to hang out at the source medium report usually new segment and we're going to do a sequence segment and up here uh you can name it whatever you want i always make it a rule to add some form of uh, naming convention in here and what i do is if it's my first funnel i'm building then i would do one if it's my eighth funnel i'm building then it would be eight so for now we'll just do the first funnel and this is going to be we're going to start with the third step and i'll tell you why here in a second so first funnel third step that way when you're looking for it in data studio and you're um, searching under segments it comes up really quickly and I'll just do test delete. Let's copy that so we'll have it. So that's the naming convention. And what we wanna do is look at page for the dimension, which is the, uh, the URI after the host name. So in this case, it's just the forward slash, which is what we want for the home page. <coughs> Uh, so in this case, we want to exactly match just, excuse me, just this. Um, and I love in segments too, it just shows you on the right-hand side, so you know you're on the right track. And that like totally makes sense. 32% of people are coming to the homepage um, because all the page channels aren't directing people directly to the homepage, not, hardly any are. And you can add or and and statements. So you could say, um, uh, and also they need to be on a mobile phone. Um, whatever you want to do, um, but you can layer these on. So that's the first step. The second step, you just click that, and this is gonna be page for all these. I pretty much use page almost exclusively when I'm building these sequential segments out, um, unless there is some weird you know, cross-domain tracking issue or something, uh, but it just makes sense to use page for all these. Second page is gonna be new, so it looks like it's pretty simple. And we just need the URI is here, so that's going to be what we need. <coughs> and then now we can see this shrinking down, obviously, because they have to go to the first step first, followed by the second step. So naturally, it's always going to be less than the previous one. Also note too, you can change this from sessions to users. So if you want to track, um, you know, sessions versus or users versus just the session, you can change that as well too. And you could say any interaction, first interaction. Uh, I usually just leave it at um, session based in any inter interaction, but obviously it just depends on your funnel and what you care about. Last step <clears throat> is the page. And then we're gonna click on this first vehicle. And we're going to grab all this, put it here. <coughs> Looks like we do have a couple of people. That was probably me uh, doing this exact step in the last week. And we're all set. So we have it all set up and we named it. So now we're going to copy this just to make sure I didn't. We're going to save it. And we started with the full funnel because we can simply copy over the segment and just delete the previous with the last step. So our new name is 1.2 because it's the second step and we just delete that and now we're good to go. All we have to do is just save and that's the second step of the funnel. And then one more. 
it's always why you start with the full funnel first. And uh, I've, I didn't realize you could even copy these over and I built out the like step one, step two, step threes, you know, normally you would, but uh, if you don't know, you could copy them over. Totally makes sense to work backwards. And then this is the first step and I'm gonna save. And um, so you can see them here. I'm actually just gonna rearrange them quickly. I like to look at the funnel from top to bottom as that's probably how I built it out in Data Studio as well. So we had, uh, so, so this is the biggest thing I think a lot of people don't do is they don't track conversion rates at every step. So I mean, what was our conversion rate at the first step? Obviously our overall conversion rates terrible two out of a thousand people so next to nothing below a percent but um just on the second step what was our conversion rate it's 34 percent um so you can kind of quickly figure out your individual conversion rate steps to figure out what step you need to improve upon so your i call your overall conversion rate your core conversion rate and you can increase that one uh, the most um so i'm sure this will help you a lot mike with your uh cro stuff um So we got our segments. Now we're just going to go over to Data Studio. And uh, Mike, you had mentioned you use scorecards. I use these pretty much exclusively. I use these all the time in Data Studio. I love them. So now we want to, um, I'm actually going to refresh because I know the segments aren't going to be active yet. <coughs> so just we're still using, we're just going to use Google Analytics for the source data. It's the exact same view as I uh, have here. Get rid of this now. So uh, we want to make sure we're tracking users. I always track users for funnel stuff because usually one person's only going to buy one thing. So that's why users make a lot more sense than sessions or page views. Um, so then we want to add a segment and here's the custom segments. 1.1 is the first step, so I simply just want to add that to the report. And I think this defaults to the last 30 days, yeah, 28 days. Let's just change this to, uh, oops, oh, we'll just leave it, it doesn't really matter. Let's copy this over. <coughs> and then this is going to be 1.2. Add it to the report. I'll just do all three for the sake of this. And then 1.1, excuse me, 1.3 is the last step. So that's the funnel you're looking at. So if you want to calculate a conversion rate between the first and the second step, you're going to highlight both. You're going to right click and blend data. And this is going to give you a new field here. It's thinking and pretty much puts it right in the middle. And uh, actually, I did that wrong. Um, we need to name these so we know. So let's say homepage 1.1. Let's call this one the SRP page, search result page, and car terminology 1.2. And Vehicle display page 1.3. I still use the same funnel kind of naming conventions. And so now uh, you'll see why we needed to name those. Now we can blend the data. And what we're going to do, we're going to click on this metric here. We're going to create a new field and we're just going to call this. Um, Step one, conversion rate. So we're gonna say the SRP divided by 
homepage. And we want this to be a percent. And we're going to apply. And there it was, 34%. That's what we did in the calculation. And just do the same thing here. I'm just going to copy this over. And this is going to be another new field. Step two. And then this is VDP. Oh. to blend the data. Let's do one more for the sake of this. Now we can, so you have to blend data every time. BDP and SRP. Percents apply. Obviously, very small here. And there's your funnel.